We're bringing in our chief meteorologist, Everno Fonte now. Of course, a hurricane watch posted earlier today for parts of the South Carolina coast. Right. We've got the 11 o'clock numbers tonight. Is anything different? It has weakened just a little bit. The downside, it hasn't moved. Let me show you the latest information from the National Hurricane Center that just came down at 11 o'clock. Now, the latest information, well, the winds at 130 miles an hour gusting to 160. Unfortunately, it still has not moved. It's about 30 miles now just along the north coastline of the Great Bahama Islands. But unfortunately, Freeport is still getting hammered quite a bit. And now the eye has actually moved a little bit onto the north shore. Here's the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. By tomorrow morning at about 8 o'clock, it is still going to be stuck in the same position right over Freeport with winds of 130 miles an hour. That still is a Category 4 hurricane. But then as we go into Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, it'll be Category 3 hurricane. Winds about 125 miles an hour positioned just off the coast of Juniper, Florida. By Wednesday night, that's when it's going to start making its turn somewhere all, well off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida with 120 mile an hour winds and that category three hurricane may stay as a category three hurricane intensity as it goes through Thursday early morning through Thursday night position at least at this point by Thursday night as a category two will be somewhere off the coast of Wilmington, North Carolina with 105 mile an hour winds before it heads out into the North Atlantic and the spaghetti models are now in general consensus that especially as we get into tomorrow through Thursday morning that even though it's going to make that turn Wednesday night into Thursday night most if not all of the model consensus is it will stay off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina but still a possibility of making a landfall somewhere around the South North Carolina coastline all the way up to the Outer Banks. Now, hurricane watches and warnings as well as tropical storm watches and warnings still remain in effect for most of the eastern side of Florida all the way up into Georgia, where Georgia already has their hurricane watches and their tropical storm watches. This extends into South Carolina. We still do have both tropical storm and hurricane watches for South Carolina's low country. This goes until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, the computer model is indicating that over the course of the next 48 hours, Dorian will still continue right along the path of the coastline of Florida until it gets to about Jacksonville. And then once it starts making its turn Wednesday afternoon, our in-house computer model still shows it going into Wednesday evening off the coast of Charleston. And then by Thursday morning off the coast of Myrtle Beach before it continues a Thursday morning into late Thursday morning well into the North Carolina coastline. Now, the one thing about the trop or hurricane force winds, it's still indicating from the National Hurricane Center that a very, very low probability for hurricane force winds on the Georgia coastline and no greater than 26% chance along the South Carolina coastline, which is good because those are 74 mile an hour plus winds. But the tropical storm force winds not only will be plaguing all of the Florida coastline, but as it gets closer, especially until Wednesday morning through Thursday night, there's a higher probability not only for the Georgia coastline, but as well for the South Carolina coastline. And that is going to be a concern. Now the timing of when these tropical storm winds will start coming in, by Wednesday morning, it's just getting to the area of Jacksonville, Florida. By midday Wednesday, it's going to start moving through Savannah, Hilton Head, and then into the low country. And then by Wednesday evening through Thursday evening, that's when it'll start impacting mostly the coastline of South Carolina from Charleston up to Myrtle Beach. There still is a probability of these strong winds getting into inland coastal areas of South Carolina. Not much of a great probability when you get into the Midlands, but we can still have windy conditions on the far eastern portions of the Midlands into the PD and down into the southern Midlands. The bottom line is that that's the reason why Governor McMaster issued an evacuation order of the entire South Carolina coast of South Carolina. And a lot of you may still be wondering, well, do I know where to evacuate? Well, that's the reason why South Carolina Emergency Management Division has put out their 2019 hurricane guide that you can still get. And if you still need the information, you can go on their website at scemd.org because that information is vital, especially when people are still evacuating to this hour. A couple of things that cone seemed to shift a little further to the east tonight, taking more of South Carolina out of that cone of uncertainty. Right. As you can see right there, but we can't let our guard down because this is the projected path 
Right. As we know with a hurricane, anything can happen. So we hope this is the best case scenario, but we have to be planning for something else. And keep in mind, Wednesday night, as is off the coast of Georgia, it's still showing a Category 3 hurricane, even to a Category 2 off the coast. But the good thing is that the spaghetti models are now getting more in line right. with it staying off the coast, at least until it gets to Myrtle Beach. The bottom line is that with that cone still not knowing where it's going to go, and especially the fact that it's supposed to spin over Freeport for the next 12 to 18 hours, right. we have to wait until it actually comes out and starts moving up the Florida East Coast. And one other observation, I think it's incredible that the eye is mimicking the coastline almost with the eye just staying off and riding up the coast, the curvature of the coast there. And That's it's staying incredible. right there. And if you think about it, this is the way many of the hurricanes that have started in the yeah. Cuban area going up the coastline of Florida, many have taken this track. And unfortunately, we've seen this already two years ago when we had to deal with Matthew. All right, Afrin, we appreciate it so very much. Late today, the uh, National Hurricane Center extended hurricane and storm surge watches again to include the South Carolina coast. 